you have two films in Tribeca Film Festival this year. I do. And can you tell us a little about those? Sure. We have a movie called Loitering with Intent, which mm -hmm. was directed by Adam Rapp, who is an award-winning playwright and an extraordinary director, mm -hmm. which stars Marissa Tomei and Sam Rockwell and Brian Garrity and a whole cast of incredible <laughs> characters. Um, and we have another movie called Just Before I Go, which was directed by Courtney Cox and is her directorial debut. And mm -hmm. Sean William Scott, Olivia Thurlby, Kate Walsh, Garrett Dillahunt, Rob Briggle, David Arquette. The list wow. goes on and on. Connie Stevens. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, remember Connie Stevens? I do, You've actually. You've never seen her like this. Really? you got to check it out. I was about to say, you're just going to leave me hanging like yep. that, aren't mm -hmm. you? Well, anyway, so you... In a pretentious way. Well, okay. Yeah, I'm That's just cool. trying to fit the mold. You're trying to fit in, and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Way to be a follower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so you per, your company produced all of these, both of these films, correct? Yes. And how, what exactly is your job as a producer? Just because I feel like so many people know the term producer, it's sure. thrown around, but mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know what that no, entails. It's a, really, it's a really good question. Actually, these two films are an excellent example of the different kinds of thing you do as a producer. Mm -hmm. With Loitering with Intent, my partner and I came into that process fairly late, like six months before we started shooting. Mm. We gave notes on the script, we helped raise the financing, we came to set and sort of saw what was going on, but we were not the lead producers. Mm -hmm. um, Lars and Jay of Parts and Labor, who are incredible producers, they did Beginners, amongst other things, oh, wow. they've done a whole bunch of incredible movies. Those guys were the leads on that, on that movie. And John and I were there to kind of back them up and give our opinions, and we gave, you know, lots of notes on the cuts and all that kind of stuff. On mm -hmm. um, Just Before I Go, um, I was really the lead producer, which means, you know, sitting in the writer's room and giving lots of notes and getting the whole team together and mm -hmm. hiring every single person and wow. putting out all the fires and being in all the casting sessions and casting people, you know, it's a lot. So what right. the producer does is we try to understand if not help form the director's vision mm -hmm. and then once we have an understanding of that vision our job is to execute the vision mm -hmm. is to be make sure that the director is only focusing on directing the movie and we are handling all the personalities and we are making sure that the next day is ready to go and we are standing at the monitor making sure that you know having that second set of eyes and going oh that was you know mm -hmm. the focus pull was a little off there mm -hmm. or have you considered getting an insert or you know or whatever mm. yeah well since Courtney Cox with this was her directorial debut mm -hmm. how is it working with a first-time director was that a bit challenging like person aside <laughs> how what, yeah. what was that like not in this case mm. um, we've done 11 features for first-time directors we're about to shoot oh. our 18th feature and um, Courtney was extraordinarily prepared. She had done 10 episodes of her television show. Mm -hmm. She had directed a Lifetime movie. So she didn't just kind of snap her fingers and get into directing. She really worked her way. She had also done a short film. She really worked her way up to this moment. Mm -hmm. And on set, too, she had a big, giant director's book, knew exactly where we were, because, you know, you shoot out of sequence. Right. So it's so important to know where you're coming from and where you're going and what the little emotional beats are in the scenes. Right. As well as having a very clear vision of how you're going to cover it, where the camera goes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, having a diagram and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, she was amazing. She really is a visionary director, and you're going to see a lot of amazing work coming from Courtney Cox, the director. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. So, for Just Before I Go, it just premiered uh, the other night. How was that? It was so fun. Yeah. It's, I, I, I recorded a little, yesterday at the second screening, uh, Courtney had to leave to go do some interviews and stuff. So mm -hmm. I recorded the two minutes following when she left. Mm -hmm. And in that two minutes, there was 12 big laughs. So they wow. say that the rule is you want to laugh a minute. This was a laugh every 10 seconds. <laughs> wow. So I, I sent her that, I emailed her that. I was like, Courtney, there's 12 laughs in two minutes. What the <laughs> heck did you do? <laughs> you know, and it's wow. infectious. It's really fun. It's a fun movie. And it's also a heartfelt movie. It's about real characters dealing with real social issues. She's mm -hmm. tackling a lot of different issues inside of this film. So. Mm -hmm. And now, did you start out as a filmmaker or did you... Venture I, in. My first career was as a musician. When really? I was 16, MTV came and did a rockumentary on my high school band. And, 
at 18, I started doing records with Robbie Robertson and Jackson Brown and Ry Cooter and wow. the Tower of Power and then got my own record deal. And then this actually segues into this. And then I started playing in a band with David Arquette. Ah. And we had some songs on those Scream soundtracks, which maybe you will cut to right now. And we got to tour, and we went toured in Spain and in France, and just had a great time, and got to see the whole sort of process of David courting mm. Courtney, and um, you know went to their wedding, and then over the years we sort of drifted apart, saw each other once or twice a year, mm -hmm. and then Courtney and I reconnected ten years later, and here we are today. Well, how did you go from musician? Because it sounds like you were doing pretty well. So yeah. what led to that change? I found myself growing older and watching everyone else in the, in the music industry stay the same age. And also, I was one of these guys that always had a camera on me. I was always making short films, often editing in camera. Like, you say your line, and then I'd jump over there, and you say your line, and right. then you'd edit in camera. I love those little short films of mine that are just all edited. Um, um, on the handheld device. But um, as I was approaching 30, I said to myself, if I want to rebrand myself, now's the time. I went back to school. I had gotten an undergraduate degree in music composition, mm -hmm. went back to school and got my graduate degree in film directing. And um, our, my first year there, we made a feature film. We asked our teachers, like, can we get insurance from the school? Can we get cameras from the school? Can we get, and they gave us no help. They were like, no, you're not ready don't do it and we were like screw you guys and borrowed cameras and made this movie for fifteen thousand dollars and we got into a bunch of festivals and sold the movie and all around the world anchor bay picked it up domestically oh, and wow. we actually made a bunch of money and we thought to ourselves we're gonna be millionaires it's the easiest business ever and then 2008 happened and dvd just fell apart and all of a sudden it right. turns out it's actually a fairly hard business to get into somewhat challenging yeah. Yeah. so then how did is that what made you want to start your own production company with your partner or it is we had such a good experience making that first movie that part of the idea was can we provide that experience to other filmmak first time filmmakers mm. so we work mostly not always but mostly with first first time filmmakers when we can mm. um, we believe in them there's something really special about people's first film there's so much passion there's so much art mm. and the they need good producers and great cinematographers to kind of be there going, I don't think this is going to work and we're shooting this whole feature in 14 days. Right. Like, let's just play the safe choice or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So what has been, what's your favorite part about just, I guess, being part of the creating process in, as a producer? There's a lot of favorite parts. I love developing screenplays or coming up with ideas for screenplays that writers then write and mm -hmm. execute. Um, the development process is fun. The casting process is amazing because all of a sudden all your ideas are morphing into something real. It's all coming to life and kind of the, the words are coming off of the page mm -hmm. and as you're picturing what that group is going to be like together. Mm -hmm. um, shooting is probably my favorite part because I thrive on chaos and there's a lot of chaos on these lower budget mm -hmm. movies. Mm -hmm. And while everybody is running around panicking because there's no solution to having lost the location on the day of the shoot, mm -hmm. I like being the calm one and kind of going, okay, what's the issue? What's the goal? Let's find a solution. Mm -hmm. And um, that's probably my favorite part. That's awesome. Finding solutions. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you, Gabe. Yeah, thank this you. Awesome. I, I don't feel like I was pretentious enough. You Should we have a staring contest? We can. Wow. My eyes are watering a little bit. Oh, I'm oh, bleeding. No. Yes. <sighs> so keep working on it. And the you'll get there. You'll get to the you'll win the staring contest I, I, next time. You cheated though. <laughs> you, just, just, oh. you were hypnotizing me. You you were looking away. <laughs> so you were cheating. Oh, I lost actually. <laughs> Never Thank mind. you. Just point of clarification. <laughs>